Collision Theory by KScience.com In any chemical reaction, there are always reactants on the left and products on the right. So in this example, these reactants will react to form these products. The bonds break between the atoms in the reactants, where new bonds form between the atoms in the products. Here we have the reacting particles. For any collision to be successful, the particles must collide. These two particles are moving towards each other. But because they move past each other and they do not collide, there is no successful collision. The particles must collide for a successful collision to take place. Now these two particles are moving towards each other. But because they do not have enough energy, there is no successful collision. Particles must have enough energy for a successful collision to take place. And this is the activation energy, the minimum amount of energy required for a reaction to take place. Now in this example, the two reacting particles moving towards each other collide with enough energy. They both have the activation energy, allowing a successful collision to take place. A new bond forms, forming new products. So for a successful chemical reaction, the particles must collide and they must have the activation energy, which is the minimum amount of energy required for a reaction to start. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. In this chemical reaction, we can see how the reacting particles have different amounts of energy, as shown by the movement lines. Where there are more movement lines, they have more energy. Where there are less movement lines, there is less energy. This is very normal. Some reacting particles will have the activation energy and some will not. These two particles moving towards each other will collide and if they have enough energy, a successful collision will take place. But it must be noted, just because particles collide, it does not mean a successful collision will take place. So to increase the chance of a successful collision, one of the main things we can do is to increase the frequency of collisions. This makes it more likely for a successful collision to take place. So by adding more reacting particles, this will increase the frequency of collisions making it more likely successful collisions will take place. A second way to increase the chance of successful collisions is particles having more energy, as shown here by increasing the number of vibration lines. These two factors, when increased, will increase the rate of reaction. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Factors affecting the rate of reaction are concentration, pressure, surface area, temperature, and catalysts. The collision theory explains how each factor affects the rate of reaction. Pause the video here to practice the keywords. The answers will follow. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. If stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. And don't forget to visit kscience.com for more videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.